Hello, this is your overview of assignment four, which is your second assignment in CSS. And in this assignment, you're going to be uh, styling a page to look like this one and show you this way. All right. And you're also uh, going to style the same content to look like this. And all the information you need to get started is on the GitHub repo. And you're going to begin with a HTML page that looks like this. So your page is going to have cats, not sea mammals, but you're going to have three topics, three images, three articles, and your instructions are going to walk you through what to do with the files. So this is just an overview. This is not a walkthrough, but I wanted to show you what things will look like after you complete the instructions that you've been given. So um, in part one, you're going to be working with your big cats page and you're going to make it look like this one. So everything is going to be stacked on top of each other. The order in the HTML doesn't change at all. And so your instructions tell you to first specify three entirely different background colors for the section elements. So you can see that in the sea mammals, the dolphins have one color, the whales have another color, and the manatees have a third color. Your cats will also have three colors. That is number one. Number two is you are going to specify a width for the article elements just once because they all are, there are three article elements, but one CSS rule will apply to all of them. And you're going to give article a white background. So you can see that here. Manatees have a white background and a width that is less than 100%. The whales have a white background and the dolphins have a white background on the article part only. Third, you are going to figure out how to center the H2, the image, the source paragraph and the article. So let me show you that with the dolphins. The H2 dolphins, the image, the source paragraph, that's a P, and the article, which now has a white background. You're going to figure out how to center each of these things. And once you've done it for one rule in your style sheet, it will apply to all three. Uh, fourth, you're going to fix the padding in the article. So when you start out, you are not going to have this nice space on the edges. It's going to be all squished and it's not going to look as nice. So you're going to figure out how to apply padding so that the text looks good. Fifth, you are going to center the text in the footer and also specify padding. So in the footer here below the manatees, this is the footer. It's quite simple, but you are going to center it and you're going to apply padding. Sixth applies to the header. The header is going to be the most challenging for you because here you're going to have to use the float property. And you can see how the header works in this one, right? It stays in one place while I'm scrolling. And when I click any of the links in the navigation bar, I go to that section. In your big cats, you'll see that your navigation bar is an unordered list and you're going to keep it as an unordered list with three LIs and you're going to style it as a horizontal navigation bar like this. Seventh, you are going to go over the whole document and you're going to adjust any margins and padding that need to be adjusted so that it basically looks nice. Now, this isn't a really complicated page, but you can see things are not squashed together. There's a fair amount of space and you want yours to not be exactly like this one, but you want to have good amounts of space and nothing looking sort of cramped or um, haphazard. For the second document, you're using exactly the same HTML. You're going to style it differently so that each of your three sections has side-by-side -side content. So what I suggest you do is you finish everything in part one. You use the same HTML, which you haven't changed at all, and you copy the same style sheet, but now you're gonna make major changes to that style sheet. So you have to figure out how to change your styles to make the side-by-side -side layout work. 
So I think it'll be much easier for you if you make one change in the HTML, one change three times, and that will be to wrap the items that you see here on the left side, the heading, the image, and the paragraph that has the image source link. The heading, the image, and the paragraph with the link. The heading, the image, the paragraph with the link. If you wrap those three things inside a div, then it'll be easier for you to accomplish this layout. So that is one change you'll make in the HTML. You'll make it three times. I want you to use the CSS float property to achieve the side-by-side -side layout. So do not try to use position. That is not the best option here. You need to figure out how to use floats. It's going to be challenging. Your book has a lot of advice for you in chapter 15 you're going to find out that when you fix the margins and padding to make it look nice, to make things not too far apart and not too close to the edge, you will find that using percentages is going to work much better than using pixels for the padding and the margin. You'll also see that I want you to remove the white background in the side-by-side -side layout. So in the first example, the first part of your exercise, you make this page and you must have a white background so that you can see the padding on the article. But when you translate this into the second kind of layout, you're going to take off the white color. You'll still have an article. You're not changing anything about the article really, but you're taking off the white background. The final step for your second page, just like with the first page, is going to be adjust your margins and padding to make it look nice like it does here. And when you've done your layout, these links are going to work just the way I've shown you. You'll also notice that the header area on the second page is identical to the heading area on the first page. Well, there's a slightly different margin on the left and right sides, but other than that, it's the same. So once you've got that header set and working properly on your first page, you won't have to worry about any changes in that header when you work on your second page. So the final steps to completing the assignment are to sync and commit your final files up to GitHub. When I look for them, I'm going to look for these files on your personal GitHub account. I'm going to need you to submit your URL into Canvas. So don't forget the final steps in order to get your grade are you have to sync and commit so that your new files are pushed up to GitHub and you have to submit your URL in Canvas so that I know what it is. I hope you have a good experience with this assignment and it's entirely based on chapters 14 and 15 in the Robbins book.